so you will can, you can um, you can ask your question on in the chat and we will answer at the end uh, so don't hesitate to uh, to ask question in the chat um so let's start the discussion without uh, any further delay, and it's with great pleasure that I welcome to this interview uh, Joran from the city of Ghent. Thank you. Uh, hi, Joran. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us today. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here. So to begin this, this discussion, uh, could you please introduce yourself and tell us what's your role uh, in the city of Ghent? Well, first of all, thank you for having me, of course. Uh, my name is Joran van Dalen. I work for the city of Ghent. Um, I'm responsible for the open data program here in the city. Um, I work within the data and information unit. Um, so that's very cool already that we have a data and information unit uh, within the city of Ghent. Um, and my role actually as an open data coordinator is to actually uh, manage our open data portal, communicate about our open data events um, and organize them, of course, and uh, keep in touch with our community actually. So uh, that's enough uh, about me. So what about you, Mano? Can you tell me uh, something more about uh, your role and, and life in Open Data Soft? Um, yes, of course. So my role in uh, at ODS is to help our customers uh, like you, Joran, uh, in the use of the platform. So uh, I train them and then I work with them to build their, their data sharing projects and get the best out of uh, the solution Open Data Soft. Uh, I also take into account um, their suggestions for improving the solution and uh, give this feedback to the product team. And finally, I am here to help them promote uh, their data project with the marketing team, such as what we're doing here today. Um, so moving to the next question. Um, now that the presentations are done, uh, let's go to the heart of the matter. Joran, can you tell us about the beginnings of open data in the city of Ghent? So what were the main objectives at first? Mm -hmm. So in Ghent, we actually started uh, around 11 years ago, around 2011, 2010. Um, we actually just started with really simple. We just started with some rudimentary open data files on the local city page. Um, there were some his data. Uh, actually, there were the, the street name lists, actually. Um, and there was no...
for other people to, to reuse it uh, in order to create new services uh, such as a map or itineraries to do nice walks in the city and discover other trees, the tallest, the widest, for example. And also, it can uh, be used to uh, create an app uh, to add uh, new information on, on, a, on another app uh, about the city. So yes, it could be it could be really really interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so looking forward to it. <laughs> um so yes like I, I was a bit talking about reuses that can be done for example with this new data set that's coming and uh, i think and i find this type of reuses of data really interesting uh, in, when uh, when people are using the platform and uh, i know that you are actively doing it against uh, like you show for the for the packings for example uh, so can you tell tell us a bit more about it yeah, um, so the main goal actually for open data this time is actually to, to actively uh, indeed engage people um, to reuse our open data. Um, so like like I said, the first step in, in that process was to have a new open data portal that's more user friendly. Um, so that's already obtained. Um, and, and something else that we, we, we actively do is, is uh, organize hackathons. Um, so like I already said, we, we, we organized apps for Ghent uh, for the last 10 years. Um, at the start, it was just a hackathon, a simple hackathon, as simple as maybe uh, not so good to say, but it was a hackathon, um, which actually focused on the, the reuse of the open data. Um, so now we, 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 we shifted that, that focus a little bit and we focused more on the side events. Um, for example, uh, three years ago, uh, our team of our, our hackathon was space data and satellite data. Um, for example, we organized data dive uh, at an observatory. Uh, so people uh, could actually watch the stars after uh, they, they, they listened to our uh, data talks. Uh, we organized a water rocket workshop for the children, uh, just all in the team of, of, of science and space. And we, we also organized a more formal Ghent for Space conference, for example, uh, with all within the, the Apps for Ghent framework. So we actually use this framework to, to organize more data events, more awareness, and we get more people uh, using uh, our open data. We also noticed that that um, our data dives were getting more and more important. Uh, it was getting more popular as well. Um, the, the tickets were uh, sold out last uh, three times, actually. Um, so, so we noticed that people really liked the formula of, of just an evening, informal talking about, about open data, what you can do with it, and get free drinks from the city as well. Maybe that's the reason why it's sold out, I don't know. Um, but it really worked for us. Um, so that's a bit how we do this. Um, the thing is with Apps for Ghent, um, we actually decided, maybe uh, people here have already uh, noticed that, uh, we decided to actually uh, stop stop with the concept of, of Apps for Ghent. Um, this does not mean, of course, that we don't we, we won't do anything else in the place, um, but we will move on uh, next year in 2022, actually, hopefully, uh, where we can organize events, uh, hopefully, um, towards some more um, open data, broader open data event. And we mainly focused on on uh, applications, um, but our opinion actually is that this is too limited. We want to move on to we want move to move on to, to insights, uh, data open data stories, uh, visualizations, nice maps, for example. It's also very valuable for us as a city. So something we will, we will do in uh, 2022, hopefully, when we uh, can do this, of course. Mm -hmm. um, Manola, like you already said, we were a bit of a forerunner, uh, as you could call it, um, in Ghent, uh, with, with, with our actions, our, our communi community, and so on. Um, do you have like other examples in Belgium um, that have a sort of similar approach as us? Well, yeah, uh, indeed, a few cities open have opened their data in uh, in Belgium. Um, for example, in Wallonia, and uh, the city of Namur is one of them, and it's a good example, uh, because what's nice with them is that they are reusing a lot of, of data to create uh, new services, new pages, and dashboards, and uh, good visualizations also for its citizens. So very good example is uh, the city statistic portal, uh, which I will show you uh, here. It's here. So it's in French, but basically what it says, it presents figures about the 26 localities of the city of Namur on various uh, categories, such as population, civil status, uh, roads. So you have the total population, the average age, and also uh, how it's, uh, how it's 
spread in the cities. And you can see the most given last names and first names, for example, in the cities. So this is pretty nice because they are reusing all the, all the data they published on the portal to create an, a page that presents them. So it's easier for citizens to understand to understand what they uh, what they offer on the open data portal. Actually, so that's a nice example, uh, which you will be able to see. Uh, I think uh, Claudia will share the, the link in the in the chat. And um, well, Namur also reused data from the open data platform to uh, create a specific service around the city cemeteries. So it's uh, another page that you can see here. And um, here the idea is to offer residents a service uh, online to find their way around cemeteries in the cities and locate the graves or of the deceased people in in the city so you uh, have a nice map and uh, you can you can you can check for, for all the graves and it's really nice because it's um so it's a service created outside created outside the platform but reusing data from the platform from the open data so that's also a really good part like i said of um of open data, it's a good reason to open it because you can create new services and innovate with the uh, the data that are shared publicly. Um, so also, I think uh, Claudia will share this um, this link for you to check it a bit more on your side. Uh, so that was the, the good examples that I had for for Belgium, for example. Um, so Joran, we talked about um, we talked about data reuse and innovations. Um, can you maybe give us some examples of new developments created thanks to the open data on your side? Mm -hmm. So um, I'd actually like to make the division between uh, internal and external projects. Um, so internally uh, within the city the administration, for example, we have our mobility dashboards. Um, until next month, we had our TMAS project. Um, which actually uh, actively use, used uh, open data source, mobility open data sources to make a dashboard of all our uh, mobility data within the city. So for example, like I already showed the parking spots, uh, but also the real-time locations of uh, buses that we have in the city, um, real-time uh, traffic counts, for example. So they were all put in one dashboard um, that was available, actually was also publicly available, but actually was used um, within the city administration and to monitor um, the mobility within the city. Uh, something else that, that we've used internally and externally are our corona numbers, of course, uh, like every city has those numbers, I guess. Um, so they're actually also published as, as um, open data um, and, and it's also published in a dashboard, uh, not on an open data portal, on another sort of portal, but also um, by using open data there. Um, we used to track um, our numbers and to see if you're doing well or not doing well. Um, another thing that I um, already showed is our crowdedness level. Um, so I showed the dashboard with the parking spots. And it was actually a bigger story. Uh, we wanted to monitor our crowdedness uh, within the city because in December um, last year, we reopened our shops just before the holiday periods. Um, and our politicians wanted to monitor uh, how crowded our city was um, because when it, when it would get too crowded, we could close off some streets. Um, so. Uh, we actually used uh, different sorts of data to monitor this. Um, we have our parking data, of course, like I already showed. This is why the dashboard was made, actually. Um, but there was also numbers from our telco providers. That is also open data, by the way, on an open data portal. So you could actually uh, see uh, how many SIM cards there are in certain regions. Um, and we are also using that's something that's in development, actually, right now, a uh, sort of, of counting system for pedestrians. And it will be also open data. Um, so we, we use different sources of data to actually monitor this, this crowdedness. Um, and then more external, of course, um, something that's, that is um, very interesting to see every year, uh, apart from last year, is that, that we have uh, people making applications uh, for a Gantt Festival. So each year, normally each year, uh, we have our Gantt Festival, uh, 10 days of Gantt Festival. Um, and we publish our events, our time sh schedules, our locations of, of stages and so on. We publish that as linked open data um, and people uh, always make their own applications of it. We as a city, we have a again festivity uh, application. Uh, it's always made by, by citizens. Um, so it's very nice to see that. Um, 
We also had uh, an interesting uh, analysis on our lettering data. So in Ghent, uh, we have an application um, that people can use to report street littering. Um, so if you see some street littering on the street, you, you report it in an app, you take a picture, and it sends a location and a picture towards our, um, our department that actually cleans up the streets. Um, and the data from that application is also open data. Um, and a company in the pocket um, actually um, analyzed this, this open data to find patterns uh, within this data to, to see if um, how long it would take for the littering company on average to clean up that littering, for example. So they did a full analysis, uh, it's like a three page analysis on the website on that open data. So it's very interesting to see that people would actually dive in this open data. Uh, another thing, um, it's a bit old school already, uh, is our sheep tracking uh, data. Uh, we used to, to track our, our sheep within the city. So we had some sheep in our city that actually mow the grass instead of, of using machines, more eco-friendly. Um, and we had some trackers on them. Um, and uh, people were actually started to reuse that data just for the fun of it. Um, they were making their own maps uh, with it. Um, a guy that I know uh, is actually making a game, Gantt Theft Auto, it's called. Um, I actually used that API from that location to, to put in sheep in his game. This, to the sheep in real time on locations in the game as well as where they were in the city. So um, it's very interesting to see that, that people um, would dive in and, and use it just for fun or for more serious stuff, of course. Um, so, Mano, um, these are some examples of, of our city, of course. Um, do you have some examples, uh, for example, in France or, or other cities, uh, England, for, for example, um, that are doing the same things or, or developing the same sort of applications? Well, yes, indeed, um, we have a lot of um, other cities doing this type of reuses. Um, for example, uh, for the COVID uh, crisis, lots of French cities published COVID dashboards during the first confinement. Uh, and also, as well as for uh, US cities, Spanish collectivities, for example, and after that, other information about COVID, uh, COVID has, been, has been shared uh, and published through yeah. dashboards or dedicated pages, uh, such as, for example, open shops or the location of testing centers. And for example, we have the city of the Jersey City doing this. And uh, I will show it to you. And same, I think uh, Claudia will share uh, the link on the chat. And so on this type of map, you can locate the testing centers in the city and also uh, have information here about, uh, about the opening hours, the street address, and some more information and details about the center. So this is a, type, this is a, a nice reuse that's made by the city of Jersey. And um, in the mobility category, uh, we also have the city of Bordeaux, in, in France, in France uh, doing a nice map and page showing the availability of parkings in the city. So you can see here the ones that are in green are opened, the ones that are in red are full, and some in black are, are also closed. Things are no one no closed here, yeah. And when you click on uh, parking, you can see the availability rate here uh, and the number of free places and uh, total places here and you have some examples of um, prices for this parking lot and uh, also here you have more information such as like the biggest height if you want to go with a big uh, high car and uh, some more information and this is all uh, of course uh, updated really uh, re in real time so that you can have also uh, always uh, the last availability in the city. Um, and another good example that I wanted to show you today is what uh, is doing the city of Geelong in Australia. And they are uh, releasing a nice, uh, some nice data about device counters deployed around multiple areas in the city center. Uh, so it's counting the number of Wi-Fi signals em uh, emitted by non-identifiable mobile devices devices within a specified property and performing certain filtering and processing. So um, this shows, for example, average daily count uh, in the city and 
can have the difference between the weekends and the weekdays. You can locate the different devices in the city and check also the number of visitors every time. And you have a, and also a, a heat map. Um, you can see the evolution also here, showing uh, how it's uh, moving through the time. And uh, you have also a possibility to see by location uh, how it's uh, how it's uh, how it's how they are counting uh, well the uh, the visitors and you can have some nice filters here to check for example one location only on weekdays only on certain type of days or months and uh, and yes that's really interesting and the one last uh, one last reuse that I wanted to show was from the city of Vancouver. Here and here in Vancouver, what they did, they created um, a really nice dashboard called the Van Dashboard and showing really uh, key, nice key figures about the cities, showcasing performance data specific for specific services in the city. So here you have 65 indicators uh, divided in six categories and you can always see um, like a key figure and also if they have a desired trend, you can see uh, how it's going. And sometimes they have some targets. So here you can see that uh, the medical incident response time is six minutes, 50, uh, 56. The target is 630. So this is a really nice way to show uh, citizens some uh, uh, how the city is going and the improvement of, of the uh, a lot of services in the city. So here you have really a lot. You can check, for example, about equity and social issues and you uh, you will have more more indicators and by clicking on one you can also have more information about um, about the evolution for example here you see uh, like the evolution between time during the time and also always have access to um, to the data set linked to each indicators um, so that was it for me for the um, for the examples of um, of reuses around around the world. <laughs> um, I'm going back to the slides. Um, and well, I think that we are we are done for the um, for the interview. So thank you, Joran, for this very interesting and inspiring exchange. I uh, really, we really hope it helps you uh, in the, here in the, to understand the open data approach in Ghent and maybe inspire you. I know uh, suggest that we move on to the question and answers. So feel free to write all your questions in the chat uh, and also on the, on the right side of the on the left side of your screen, and we will check out, check it out with uh, with Joran and answer your questions. And I think Joran that we had already one question, but it was a bit. Uh, earlier during the discussion, I, I think I don't know if you saw it. Yes, thank you, Claudia, for uh, for the reminder. Yeah, um, like Astrid asked uh, if if uh, okay, if you if, yeah if I can give a scoop uh, of our new open data project. Um, nice try. Um, I think you have to wait for a few weeks. Sorry, Astrid, um, but. It, um, it will be interesting. Um, so, like I already said, we, we are working more on um, on our community. Um, I want to to have more engagement with our users. Um, so that's actually all I can say. So that, that's we're trying to to do that more in the coming months and years. So um, it will be about that. That's all I can say for now. It's actually already more than than it, that there was on Twitter. So. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe you have a question? Thank you. Yeah, hopefully, yes. Ah, right. Um, 
Yeah, um, our link to open data. Um, we are currently uh, working on uh, putting our link to open data on the portal. So I guess that's already an answer on, on a bit of your question. Um, and we want to, to actually to, to um, reopen, or well, it's already open our link to open data, of course. We want to reopen our new portal as well. So in the coming weeks, um, you will see some uh, news messages and, and on Twitter that we really opened our, our link to open data. So um, there, there is some support for, for this on the platform. Uh, you have to be a little patient. <laughs> I can answer the question, the question from Bart. Um, we do not have such funny, uh, um, uh, uh, well, so data sets that are that funny, uh, that's the one we have for the, for the heap. But um, I saw one uh, from the city of Bordeaux as well about the taste of water. So actually it's a running test to check the taste of the water and see if it's sour or whatever. And it's pretty. It was pretty funny, but the thing is, it's not. It hasn't been updated for for quite a few times. So. I... Uh, that's that's a bit, but that's that's one that's a good that I said that I found interesting, and maybe I don't know if you and you have uh, you have some other example in your mind that you saw in other cities. Um. No, I didn't notice that there are cities tracking sheep, um, but um, thin data sets. It's only... <laughs> I have to think really hard now. And well, you also have the shark attacks. Uh, yeah, yeah. Inventory, uh, listing all the shark attacks uh, that happen in the world and the reason, and sometimes it's really funny reasons. So. So that's, a, that's one I, I really like, but it's a bit sad sometimes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's kind of a funny that I said, yes. It's true. Mm. So I guess the question from uh, Jean. Um, we are using in Ghent, I cannot talk for Namur, of course, um, but we, we are using our Futoso um, for our linked open data. Um, but. Like I said, I can add also for uh, for Namibia, of course. Um, what technologies do you use to build user interfaces? Um, um, which user interfaces do you mean? Uh, user interfaces of our of our portal, um, because that's all open data soft. Uh, cool. the, the, um, the page 
packages that you're on this is uh, like on the platform and they are, we are using uh, HTML, CSS languages to create those pages. Mm -hmm. And well, they, we are using some widgets from the platform. To create the um, the channels, for example, and we have a lot of widgets to create aggregations and stuff like that. To key uh, figures and KPIs on the on the pages, so it's all may uh, all be with a uh, HTML CSS. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the notification, by the way, of all the links of Apps And um, to be honest, we, we're not really more. Um, Like I said, we're moving to a new uh, concept with a new website and so on. Uh, um, so, uh, so that's not maintained very well. I'll look into it because I know there are some use cases there, um, and they were they were used to link to like, like presentations of that use cases and so on. So I'll, I'll try my best to to.
find the documentations uh, and so on. Um, but thank you for the notification, of course. Yeah, and concerning the question about APIs, um, <coughs> yes, you will find some uh, document APIs on, uh, on the on the uh, on ODS. Uh, all the uh, uh, if you check at one, for example. <coughs> In the in the portal, uh, the, the open data portal, you will see there's a specific tab uh, 